Now, one of the shows that I enjoyed a lot when I was a little kid was Bernard's Watch. It was a series about a young lad who had a magic pocket watch which could stop or start time. And I have a very special guest with me right now. It is the guy who played Bernard way back in the 1990s. It's David Peachy. Hello. Hello there. How are you doing today? Yeah, good, thank you. Thank you for taking part and speaking to us today. No, no problem at all. So first off, I wanted to ask you, growing up, did you always want to get into acting? Um, not really. I was part of um, I was part of a kids' um, drama group called the it was the CITV Junior Workshop at the time, um, and um, I, I was in there from the age of seven or eight, and it's I guess at that age it's just the sort of thing you do if you like. Um, and it all came from that, really. It wasn't ever, I wouldn't say it was ever a, a big dream to, to be doing it. It just all happened so young that I was sort of found in that position. So uh, did you uh, appear in anything else on TV before Bernard's Watch, or was it just that? No, it was just Bernard's Watch. Since then, I did a couple of sort of small things, um, extras in things, but nothing else, really. How did the role of Bernard come about then from working in the junior workshop? So the workshop was um, run um, by a guy called Ian Smith, and there was quite a lot of um, quite a lot of sort of a lot more people famous than me who have um, come out of the workshop, and it was say funded by ITV, um, and so they, they put on shows, they put on um, plays, and I believe that I was in a, a play, and the director was watching it, um, and said, oh, he would fit the the, the show that we're making. Um, and I think it was that simple, really. I didn't have to audition for it. I didn't have to... I think I had a bit of a, a chat with him just to make sure I wasn't going to sort of wreck the place on set and things. Um, and, and that was it, really. So quite lucky, really. Just right place, oh, right very. time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, how old were you at the time when Bernard's Watch started? So um, I think I was about eight or nine. I, can't, I always uh, forget, but yeah, around eight or nine. And I imagine at that age you thought it was pretty cool starring in your own TV show. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, well, I probably didn't think of it like that, to be honest. Um, and I, I think I always thought it was a lot smaller than, uh, I'm not saying it's turned out to be a big thing, but it, a lot smaller, sort of a local thing. It was filmed in my hometown. Um, and so it didn't seem to be such a big thing at that time, whereas actually almost after it's uh, finished, it's almost seemed to have got a bit bigger, if that makes sense. Yes, yeah, certainly. I suppose, really, you kind of have this picture of uh, working in television. You kind of get this picture of, like, Hollywood-style Yeah, thing. no, it wasn't quite that, no. No. Um, but uh, I've always wondered, actually, how they did the effects on that show. Like, you know, you'd be moving around and yeah. everyone else would be still, but they weren't standing still because, you know, it's impossible to stand completely still. And yeah. also objects would stay in midair. I mean, can you shed any light on how they achieve that? So I think it actually changed throughout the series. So there were five series, and I think uh, it, whenever we were filming it, if um, we people would stand still, but obviously then uh, I'm not uh, too high tech, but some sort of camera tricks would freeze. I think they'd freeze probably part of the screen. So there was always problems if I was, say, walking behind somebody that was frozen, because then that would be difficult for them to do on the camera. Um, so I would often be walking on one side of the screen and the, the other side of the screen be frozen. Um, they, they, I, say, I didn't get too much involved in that at that age. Um, but yeah, everyone did still stand still and be as still as they can, I guess, just to make it easier for them to, to freeze it, I guess. Yeah, I suppose really they would have done a lot of split screen effects. Aren't yeah, they? yeah, I think that was a, the sort of thing, as I say, it's a bit, um, it's not really my area, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know, to be honest. That's fair enough. So while appearing on the show, did you get recognised a lot? Uh, so... I wouldn't say a lot, but it did happen. And I used to, to be honest, when I was that age, I used to absolutely hate it. Um, just because I, I was, what, what, 10, 11 when it was on as well. And um, you just sort of, if you're in sort of like McDonald's and you see sort of see a group of kids that age sort of looking over and, and you just think, oh, God. I don't. Um, but it, it, never, it never bothered me. I never, um, I, I was just quite shy, I guess, at that age. Um but yeah, it happened every now and again. It wasn't uh, there was no paparazzi outside the house. It's fair to say. Um, but yeah, it did happen every now and again. Yeah, I can imagine. I was quite shy as a child, so I'd have hated all the attention as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and also, what did that make school like? Did everyone at school want to be your friend all of a sudden? Yeah, not particularly, to be honest. So uh, at school, it was almost again a bit of a 
no one really talks about it. I guess because it was almost normal to them because um, I was at school with them and I was just David to them, then it was never really an issue. When I went to uh, secondary school, it was a little... People who I didn't know might have more mentioned it in the corridor and things. Um, but no, again, I, w- I wasn't being mobbed around the streets of school and things. And they actually had a... At the school I was at, they had like an after-school club, which they... The first school I went to was quite a small school and they essentially sort of showed Burners Watch episodes on repeat uh, in their sort of after-show, after-school club. Um, so, yeah. What was that like, having to watch yourself back with your friends all the time? Um, yeah, well, I mean, it was it's a little bit surreal, I guess. Um, but it's still it's pretty cool as well. And um, as I say, I, my friends... It wasn't as though I was some different to them in any way. It's just that I happened to be on TV, I guess. Yeah, um, definitely. But it was never, it was never really too much of a big thing. And actually, other times we would rarely talk about it, to be honest. Yeah, fair enough. I imagine though, it's uh, it can be a useful conversation starter. It can. So I, to be honest, I rarely actually tell anybody. Um, it's not something I ever bring up a conversation. Oh, by the way, did you know I was? Um, but very, very occasionally, I'll mention it if. Um, if I'm really struggling and you're doing some sort of tell us something interesting about yourself, I try to avoid it, to be honest. Um, but yeah, every now and again, I'll, I'll mention it. And it's more my friends or people who, if we're, if we're on a night out or especially when we're at university and things, would go up to other people and tell them rather than me telling them. The other thing I wanted to ask as well, and now that you're a grown adult and you don't really look the same as you did back then, do you get recognised much now? I still, I've, I've still got a bit of a baby face, and I don't look too different to how I did then. But I don't get recognised now. No, occasionally, again, if it's one of those times where um, it comes up, or people find out, or they look up your name, and something comes up, then people go, "Oh yeah, I can see it." But I've never, I've not been stopped randomly and asked if I was Bernard from Burner's Watch for many years now. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, the thing is, as well, I've mentioned to a few friends that I'm speaking to you today, and, uh-huh. and one of my friends messaged me and said that they'd read online a story that you were in college or university and you used to uh-huh. walk into the dinner halls and everyone would freeze to take the mickey. Is this true? So it's certainly nothing I was aware of if people were doing it. Um, I've, I've read that you're right. There's a lot of stuff online, apparently, about things that had happened at university. Someone, there was once... Um, story that I died on a yachting accident um, and to the point where people, someone came around to my house, my parents' house and gave them flowers and they were like, he's absolutely fine. Uh, um, but no, I, I can't remember that ever happening. I, it wouldn't surprise me if there was a group of six or seven people who did that, but certainly not in my eye line and it certainly wasn't the whole dinner hall um, or I probably would have noticed. It's crazy that someone uh, did a death hoax about you. That's pretty... Well, yeah, I... I, I yeah, it didn't make any sense to me. And I say the first we knew about it was someone knocked on the door. I don't think it was even that sort of bigger group, but I guess it was It was probably a good few years ago now when probably people trusted things on uh, Facebook and things a little bit more. And, um, yeah, it was a bit odd for my family, but fortunately they'd seen me that morning, so they, they didn't have any major worries. Yeah, there seemed to be, a, unfortunately, a bit of a trend a few years ago of, of these Facebook groups where 90s kids TV stars, there'd be hoax that they'd passed away. It happened to quite a number of people. Yeah. So... Um, uh... But I say it was only a, yeah, it's not, yeah. no harm done, really. Yeah, definitely. Um, so how long did it take to film a single episode? So a single episode normally took, I think, they uh, about two and a half to three days. Um, yeah, we didn't, I think they normally aim for about two and a half days, so two episodes a week, basically, is what they, it took. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. And um, you mentioned that it was filmed in your hometown. Where yeah. was it filmed? So it was filmed in, in Nottingham. Um, so Nottingham is where the, it was the Nottingham Junior Television Workshop. And Nottingham at that time had the ITV studios as well, um, which aren't there anymore. Um, and so, yeah, it was all filmed on location. It wasn't all on set, but it was in a, an area of uh, Nottingham called Gamston. Um, so, yeah, just around the corner from me, really. And um, with all the many episodes that you starred in, did you ever have a favourite? Um... Not particularly. So there was an episode with um, Leslie Grantham in, um, who sadly passed away earlier this year. Um, and, and he was absolutely lovely to me on set. And he was, I guess, at the time, well, my parents were telling me he was a big star and he's from EastEnders and things. So it was pretty cool to see him. And I, as a result, I remember that episode. Um, 
so yeah, I, I, if I was picking one, I'd probably say that, but not particularly, no. I was actually going to ask you about that. I was going to say, I remember you uh, appeared with Leslie Grantham. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. It seemed like, uh, from what I've heard from a lot of people who work with him, that he was quite lovely, despite the fact he always played very horrible characters. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, as I say, I was probably 11 at the time, and he was absolutely lovely to me and was re- really kind and um, made it very easy for me and was, was like that with everyone on set. There was no sort of um, Hollywood about him, if you like. Um, but I say I only saw him for a couple of days. But yeah, it certainly came across very well to me at that age. Oh, great stuff. Well, I'll tell you my favourite. Um, one of my favourite episodes is the one with the uh, the garden gnomes and you scare off a load of burglars. Yeah. That was always I remember my favourite. Yeah, I, I, that was probably one of my other favourites as well, actually. But I do remember that one very well. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, there were some great episodes. Um, so what did you think when they rebooted Bernard's Watch a few years later with a different actor in the role? Yeah, so... Uh... I mean, it was a probably it was a good few years after I'd finished, so there was never any chance of me doing it again. Um, and I guess, in some ways, I was quite proud that they'd, they'd wanted to bring it back. There was clearly enough support for it to come back, or people wanted to see it again. Um, it, it seemed like a, I only saw a couple of episodes. But it seemed like a completely different show, if you like. And I say all the special effects had a bit a bit more special effects than we had. Um, but yeah, good luck to them. I think. I, I, um, yeah, part of you thinking, oh, that, that's my program. But in re- reality, no, I'm quite happy for them. And uh, yeah, I guess I, it, was, it was good to bring it back, even if it was a, in a different setup. Fair enough. I will admit, I preferred the original, but then again, by the time the reboot came on, I was getting a bit too old to be watching kids TV. Yeah, anyway, uh, so. well, I think that's it. I think um, those people who probably watched the original would probably say the original, but then, and those kids who probably watched the second one probably had never seen the original, I guess. Definitely. So I've got to ask, do you still own the watch? I don't know. I never own the watch. That's something all people, uh, everyone asks, really. And um, so at, at the end of every series, um, it was sent to, well, locked in a stock cupboard, I guess. And I don't know if anybody has the watch or if it's, say, locked in a cupboard somewhere in um, ITV studio somewhere. I don't know, to be honest. But I've certainly not got it. You'd have thought, really, that they'd have given it you after it wrapped up as a keepsake or something yeah, like that. Yeah, well, I, I think... Um, after every series, they were never really sure. After, I mean, after the second series, we all thought that was going to be it and would be no further series, and we ended up doing five. Um, so I don't know whether uh, they thought, well, we better look after it in case we do another series, in case we're back next year. Um, I'm not sure, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. But it'd be, yeah, it'd be nice to put on eBay, I guess. <laughs> I'm sure it'll fetch a lot of money. Yeah. Um, so are you still in contact with any of the uh, cast from the show? So I'm um, um, uh, sort of informally, I guess. So I, I, there's none of them who I, I speak to regularly. Um, I still uh, know of uh, Phoebe Allen, who played Karen, um, and a few other people who are in odd episodes, um, but not not regular contact now. Well, fair enough. I, I suppose as uh, as time goes on, you drift apart, unfortunately. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I say that the filming it was such a great time and everybody the cast the crew were also um kind of fantastic there's a, a part of my life i look back on really fondly um but i was only sort of 11 and 12 when i finished so um yeah i guess when you look back at your friends 11 and 12 often you're not in contact with with all of them i guess very true. I suppose at the time as well, you didn't realise um, how great a time you were having, and it's only when you're older you kind of realise, oh, that was fantastic what I was doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just it seems normal at the time, and then you, you look back and realise well, it probably wasn't normal. Not every kid was doing it, but yeah, at the time it seems quite normal. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure at that age, most of us would have given our right arm to have our own TV show. Yeah, much. absolutely. Um, so, uh, just a few more questions to wrap up. Uh, what were your favourite kids' TV shows growing up? Um. So I, I can remember liking Zap. Oh, yeah, that was my favourite. Yeah, I liked Zap. Um, and I liked um, Funhouse. Um, I'd probably say those two would spring, spring to my mind. Those are two fantastic choices. Yeah. Um, so finally, for those wondering, what are you up to these days? So I'm now actually... Um, I work as a, a GP in Nottingham. Um yeah, I went to university and, um, yeah, I'm, I've been a GP, fully qualified GP now for the last year. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. 
Oh, fantastic. So, for those living in Nottingham and uh-huh. you need to see the doctor, you might end up being seen by you, Bernard Beasley. You could do, yeah. I've never had a patient come in and say, are you Bernard or anything like that? But, um, yeah, it's uh, theoretically possible. <laughs> fantastic stuff. Well, David, thank you for taking the time out to talk to me today and I no uh, wish you all, all the best in the future. No problem. Cheers. Thanks very much. Thank you.